Welcome to a brand new day. The Lord has made this day especially for you and me. Isn't that great? And I trust he took care of you in the night. I woke up a few times, but he took care of me, gave me things to pray about and things to, glorious things of him to think about. Things, thoughts and things that would push out how Satan would try to get his way in. So we didn't let him, Miss Kathy, Cindy, Miss Connie. Mm -mm. We just thought on glorious things on this March 30th. We're almost to the end of the month here, and we will be ready to welcome April, won't we? The great month of spring. I have a beautiful hymn. I'm sure many of you know it, and I hope you hum along, sing along, whatever. It tells the whole Passion Tide story. There is a green hill far away Without a city wall Where the dear Lord was crucified Who died to save us all Miss Sharon and Luann And I think Lu I, think I missed Jolinda we may not know, we cannot tell what pains he had to bear, but we believe it was for us. He hung and suffered there. He died that we might be forgiven. He died to make us good that we might go at last to heaven, saved by his precious blood. There was no other good enough to pay the price of sin. He only could unlock the gate of heaven and let us in. Oh, dearly, dearly, he has loved, and we must love him too, and trust in his redeeming blood, and try his works to do. Isn't that lovely? I mean, that comes from 1890, John Gover, who wrote many hymns. All right, y'all, on this great brand new day, let us fill up with his word for whatever this day has for us. We will be reading from Deuteronomy chapter 13, clear up to 15. So I'm going to hustle along a little bit here. A little bit longer today and the awful lot of uh, information in here of staying away from idol worship and oh we have all those temptations today don't we some of them we don't even realize there will be some food rules what you can eat what you should stay away from and even though that's Old Testament there's still a lot of truth in what we choose to eat and I think sometimes we are choosing a few bad things because we like the taste, right? And is Jane is Jane really wearing a duck on the front of her body? Yes. This is from the olden days, y'all. Sammy was a great duck hunter, and we went to all these sportsman shows, and they had all kinds of things that ladies could buy, and I thought it would be neat back then if I wore a duck. Well, I found it at the bottom of the drawer. You know how that goes. <laughs> so you can enjoy. I, I hope your eyes are drawn to the duck and you can forget the, the lines on Jane, right? Okay, enough foolishness. Let's get down to real business of drinking in his word. And we ask you, Holy Ghost, please, please, Anoint this word for us today. Open up these ears even wider than they were before in our eyes of understanding of the real world. You must be born again that you can see 
the kingdom of God. You see, there's two fighting processes going on in the world, isn't there? There's righteousness and there's wickedness. And we need to know what God says, which is righteous, which is wicked. So we'll hear some more today. Deuteronomy 13, if there arises among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and he gives you a sign or a wonder, and we're going to see this in the future, take these sentences in, and they will be deceiving, trying to today a lot. And the sign or the wonder comes to pass, of which he spoke to you, saying, Let us go after other gods, which you have not known, and let us serve them. You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God is testing you. <clears throat> Got that? The Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. You shall serve him and hold fast to him. But that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death. That's how they handled it back then. I mean, God just spits it right out here, doesn't he? That dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken in order to turn you away from the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Oh, we're celebrating Passover. All the precious Jews are celebrating the story once again being brought out of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of bondage to entice you. This false prophet's trying to entice you from the way in which the Lord your God commanded you to walk. So you shall put away the evil from your midst. Well, we're supposed to put away the evil from our midst today too. Walk away, get brave and bold, speak against it. You'll have people, even church people, who will say, well, you shouldn't be saying that. Really? Do you want me to fall into wickedness? If your brother, the son of your mother, your son or your daughter, the wife of your bosom or your friend, who as, as your own soul secretly entices you, God always tries, or uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Satan always tries to use somebody that you really love to get you off track. And they say, let us go and serve other gods, which you have not known, neither you nor your fathers of the gods of the people which are all around you, near to you or far off from you, from one end of the earth to the other end of the earth. You shall not consent to him or listen to him nor shall your eye pity him, nor shall you spare him or conceal him. See, don't conceal him. Speak up and reveal it. <clears throat> but you shall surely kill him. Now, that isn't what we want to do today. We want to get him strong in the Lord, don't we? Or she. Your hand shall be the first against him to put him to death, and afterward the hand of all the people. Well, all the people back then didn't do it unless they heard. It had to be told publicly. And you shall stone him with stones until he dies, because he sought to entice you away from the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. So all Israel shall hear, tell it, and fear, and not again do such wickedness as this among you. If you hear someone in one of your cities which the Lord your God gives you to dwell in saying, if you hear him talking, 
It's always words out of the mouth we have to deal with. Corrupt men have gone out from among you and enticed the inhabitants of their city, saying, let us go and serve other gods. And you know, in our day and age, it happens so subtly. Oh, listen, will you go to this play with me? Oh, it's a hit on Broadway. Yeah, and it's filled with wickedness, right? But oh, the acting is so good or whatever. Costumes are beautiful. Oh, let's go to this movie. Or let's go to this party. That's the way it happens. Sometimes very, you fall into it. You didn't know you were going to see such a thing. Let us go and serve other gods which you have not known. And then you shall inquire. This is what you should do. Inquire, search out, and ask diligently. Find out about the thing. Right? Find out who's having the party. What, what are we going to do with the party? I mean, are we going to just sip coffee and have fun talking and sharing the Lord? Or, you know, are, are we going to smoke crack? I mean, what what's happening? Right? And if it is indeed true and certain that such an abomination was committed among you, you shall surely strike the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword, utterly destroying it. How about that, Mel? Okay? I mean, now the Lord is saying, just destroy the whole city, utterly destroying it, all that is in it and its livestock. Now, I just want to make one point here. Well, why would you kill all the cows? Do you remember when we just read it? Jesus got in the boat, crossed over the lake, and went to the land of the Gadarenes, and the demonic man came. What did those demons say that he cast out? Oh, send us into the pigs. Don't, don't let us go into the abyss. Listen, we're talking about a wicked city. The Lord's saying destroy it all. Well, very likely, I mean, the place is covered with wickedness. Demons are invited there. Maybe there's lots of demons in the livestock, huh? Just like the pigs. And what happened to the pigs? They ran down the hill and drowned. So we have an experience right from the Word of God, one of Jesus' most dramatic deliverances of a person. But it involved demons that went into pigs. So all that is in it and its livestock with the edge of the sword, and you shall gather all its plunder into the middle of the street. All these idol worship stuff into the middle of the street and completely burn with fire the city and all its plunder for the Lord your God. For the Lord your God. It shall be a heap forever. It shall not be built again. So none of the accursed things shall remain in your hand that the Lord may turn from the fierceness of his anger and show you mercy. Have compassion on you and multiply you, just as he swore to your fathers, because you have listened to the voice of the Lord your God. See, whose voice are you going to listen to? Satan tempting your head? Oh, I'd really like to go see that movie. No? I mean, matter of fact, that, that is one of my testimonies of my life. When I accepted Christ in 1972, and I did all kinds of acting, and I still, you know, I, I like to do things that, for the Lord that involve a little bit of that kind of stuff. But I quit. I mean, I don't, I don't even know the names of the actors <laughs> anymore. I never went to any more movies. I didn't want to go. Even ones that were, they were okay. I mean, so, you know, I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go anymore. Still won't want to go. Have you had that testimony? And it might not be the one I'm saying, but when you accepted Christ, there were things that just, 
They disappeared from your life. Things that you wanted and things that surprised you, perhaps. Okay? Oh, hallelujah, that his anger will go away and show you mercy, have compassion on you, and multiply you. Children, just as he swore to your fathers, because you have listened to the voice of the Lord your God to keep all his commandments, which I command you today, to do what is right in the eyes of the Lord your God. I mean, listen, this whole nation, I mean, we've been a couple of days still listening to Moses, Moshe, talking to them, reminding them of every single thing before he dies. We move right along to chapter 14 of Deuteronomy, Dabarim. You are the children of the Lord your God. That's you today. You shall not cut yourself nor shave the front of your head for the dead, for you are a holy people to the Lord your God. And the Lord has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. And it has caused them problems, hasn't it, with other nations? They're jealous. Who do you think you are? nose in the air Jews you know they've, they've suffered terrible things you shall not eat now here we go are you ready are you ready to hear about the food you shall not eat any detestable thing these are the animals which you may eat the ox the sheep the goat the deer the gazelle the roe deer, the wild goat, the mountain goat, the antelope, and the mountain sheep. And you may eat every animal, and I hear, here's a big clue that you can always go by, with cloven hooves, having the hoof split into two parts, and that chews the cud. You ever watch a cow? It's like they're chewing sideways among the animals. Nevertheless, of those that chew the cud or have cloven hooves, you shall not eat. And here's a list. Such as these, the camel, the hare, and the rock hyrax. For they chew the cud, but they do not have cloven hooves. And I have to admit, I've been served camel in Kenya. And it's been hard for me. They are unclean for you. Also, the swine. Here's the hard one, y'all. The bacon. Okay, the ham. Also, the swine is unclean for you. Because it has cloven hooves, yet it does not chew the cud. You shall not eat their flesh or touch their dead carcasses. And I'm going to make a bombastic statement. Isn't it just like Satan to try to get the whole Christian world to eat ham on Passover, Easter? The, okay, recover, recover. Please don't be against Jane. I'm just emphasizing the word I just read. Also, the swine is unclean for you. <clears throat> These you may eat of all that are in the waters. You may eat all that have fins and scales. Oh, that's good news to all you people in Ohio where I come from. We have perch and pickerel. We can eat them. And whatever does not have fins and scales, you shall not eat. It is unclean for you. Now, I know many of you can say, Jane, it's the Old Testament. Now, we got released of all that in the New Testament. That's a real debatable subject, isn't it? But listen, if God originally said, don't eat them, are they good for you? <laughs> That's the whole thing. Now, we're going to move along to the things that fly. 
all clean birds you may eat. Man, isn't that amazing? I, I mean, she's wearing a duck on the front of her. <clears throat> Hooey! Let's see how I, I shape up, okay? All clean birds you may eat, but these you shall not eat. The eagle, the vulture, the buzzard. Oh, that's good. They don't even sound good, do they? The red kite, the falcon, and the kite after its kinds. <clears throat> Every raven after its kind. The ostrich. Ah, doesn't sound good, does it? The short-eared owl. What are we having tonight, darling, for dinner? Well, I thought we'd have some owl. Doesn't sound good, does it? The seagull and the hawk after their kinds. The little owl, the screech owl, the white owl, the jackdaw, the carrion vulture. Oh, that's one we really don't want to eat, do we? See him by the side of the road. I call him God's cleanup committee. The fisher owl, the stork, the heron after its kind, and the hoopoe, and the bat. Also, and I was going to look up that. What is that? H-O-O-P-O-E. Anybody know? I hope you put it down. Hallelujah. Put it down. What is that? Also, every creeping thing that flies is unclean for you. They shall not be eaten. Praise God, I do not want a salad that has wasps in it or flies. Do you? You may eat all clean birds. You shall not eat anything that dies of itself. You may give it to the alien who is within your gates, that he may eat it, or you may sell it to a foreigner, for you are a holy people to the Lord your God. You shall not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. You shall truly tithe all the increase of your grain that the field produces year by year, and you shall eat before the Lord your God in the place where he chooses to make his name abide, the tithe of your grain and your new wine and your oil of the firstborn of your herds and your flocks, that you and why, Listen to this. This should be in all caps in our understanding that you may learn to fear the Lord your God always. But if the journey is too long for you, in other words, where God has chosen, the place he's chosen, if you live far away, if the journey is too long for you so that you are not able to carry the tithe, or if the place where the Lord your God chooses to put his name is too far from you, when the Lord your God has blessed you, then here, here's a, a way that he's, he's given to help out with that. Then you shall exchange it for money, take the money in your hand, and go to the place which the Lord your God chooses. And you shall spend that money for whatever your heart desires, for oxen or sheep, for wine or similar drink, for whatever your heart desires. You shall eat there before the Lord your God, and you shall rejoice, you and your household. Oh, good, Connie's right on it. They're colorful birds found across Africa, Asia, Europe. Ooh, crown of feathers. You shall not forsake the Levite who is within your gates, for he has no part nor inheritance with you. Remember, his inheritance is the Lord. Thank you, Connie, for doing that. At the end of every third year, now this is what they had to do, at the end of every third year, you shall bring out the tithe of your produce of that year and store it up within your gates. And the Levite, because he has no portion nor inheritance with you, and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow 
who are within your gates may come and eat and be satisfied that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hand, which you do. Oh, beautiful way to extend hospitality, right? All right, we move right along, y'all, to chapter 15 of Deuteronomy, Dabarim. At the end of every seven years, you shall grant a release of debts. And this is the form of the release. Every creditor who has lent anything to his neighbor <clears throat> shall release it. How about that? He shall not require it of his neighbor or his brother because it is called the Lord's release. Of a foreigner you may require it, but you shall give up your claim to what is owed by your brother. And you know, a lot of times that would be like uh, reminding them, right? Maybe they've even forgotten to give it back to you, whatever it was. And because you release it, they, they get feeling guilty. And they say, I better give that back. Oh, a lot of good things would come of this, wouldn't it? Except when there may be no poor among you, for the Lord will greatly bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess as an inheritance. Only if you carefully obey the voice of the Lord your God <clears throat> to observe with care all these commandments which I, Moses, Moshe, command you today, for the Lord your God will bless you just as he promised you. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. Oh, America. America. <clears throat> what a debt. What disobedience. But you shall not borrow. You shall reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over you. Boing! We have someone very close to reigning over us. You can hardly buy anything in a store that doesn't come from that country. If there is among you a poor man of your brethren, Within any of the gates in your land, which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not harden your heart, nor shut your hand from your poor brother. But you shall open your hand wide to him and willingly lend him sufficient for his need, whatever he needs. Beware, lest there be a wicked thought in your heart, saying, The seventh year, the year of release, is at hand, and your eye be evil <clears throat> against your poor brother, and you give him nothing, and he cry out to the Lord against you, and it becomes sin among you. I mean, I mean, you Americans, look what we have going on at the border. What a mess. What a mess. You shall surely give to him, and your heart should not be grieved when you give to him, because for this thing the Lord your God will bless you in all your works and in all in which you put your hand. For the poor will never cease from the land, Therefore, I command you, saying, You shall open your hand wide to your brother, to your poor and your needy in your land. We don't read any words where a bunch of people are trying to swamp a nation, right? If your brother, a Hebrew man, or a Hebrew woman is sold to you and serves you six years, then in the seventh year, you shall let him go free from you. And when you send him away free from you, you shall not let him go away empty handed. You shall supply him liberally from your flock 
from your threshing floor and from your wine press, from what the Lord your God has blessed you with, you shall give to him. You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you. Therefore, I command you this thing today. And if it happens that he says to you, I will not go away from you. He loves living with you because he loves you and your house since he prospers with you. Then you shall take an awl and thrust it through his ear to the door and he shall be your servant forever. I, I, and it, don't leave him stuck to the door. Oh, I, I just had to throw that in, right? Also, to your female servant, you shall do likewise. It shall not seem hard to you when you send him away free from you, for he has been worth a double hired servant in serving you six years. And then the Lord your God will bless you in all that you do. All the firstborn males that come from your herd and your flock you shall sanctify to the Lord your God. You shall do no work with the firstborn of your herd, nor shear the firstborn of your flock. You and your household shall eat it before the Lord your God year by year in the place which the Lord chooses. But if there is a defect in it, if it is lame or blind, or has any serious defect, you shall not sacrifice it to the Lord your God. You may eat it within your gates. The unclean and the clean person alike may eat it. You can serve it to foreigners, strangers, right? As if it were a gazelle or a deer. Only you shall not eat its blood. You shall pour it on the ground like water. All right, we move right along, y'all. There was a lot in there that's good for us to go back over again. We move right along to Luke chapter 8. We have been reading in that chapter where we are up to verse 40. Luke 8 verse 40. So it was when Jesus returned Returned. Returned from where? Well, remember, he said, let's get in the boat and cross over the lake. He went over to the land of the Gadarenes on the other side of the lake, okay? Did all that. So now, when Jesus returned, that the multitude welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. When is he coming back? They were waiting. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet, and he begged him to come to his house, for he had an only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she was dying. But as he went, so he said, okay, and as he went, the multitudes thronged him. They were waiting for him to get back. Now he says he's leaving. They thronged him. Oh, you know, touch me, please, before you leave. Now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years, who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any came from behind, behind him. And she said, I'm, I'm, I've got to touch him. I know if I touch him, I shall be healed. Somehow in that throng, that crowd, she got down on her knees, maybe crawled through some legs, who knows? <clears throat> and she touched the border of his garment. Scott would tell us the tzitzis, the fringes. And immediately... Immediately, her flow of blood stopped. It stopped. And Jesus said, 
Who touched me? When they all denied it, because they thought he was going to ball them out, I guess. They all denied it. I didn't do it. Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitudes throng and they press on you. And you say, who touched me? But Jesus said, somebody touched me, for I perceived power going out from me. How about that? Jesus knew, even though she was behind. He wasn't looking at her. Now, when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling. She thought, oh, I'm in trouble now. She came trembling and falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason. <clears throat> She's going to come. No, listen, I just, listen, I have this problem, and I, can't you just hear it? And she's scared to death. And in the presence of all the people, the reason she had touched him. And that's an embarrassing reason. She normally wouldn't, she wouldn't want to announce that. But she declared she touched him. <clears throat> and how she was healed immediately. And Jesus knew. He felt the power leave him. And he said to her, he didn't bawl her out. He didn't say, how dare you get down and behind me, touch me. No, he says, daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Isn't that beautiful? And he says, your faith has made you well. Oh, what an encouragement to all of us about our faith. While he was still speaking, someone came from the ruler of the synagogue's house saying to him, your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him saying, do not be afraid. How about that? Your daughter is dead. Jesus says, do not be afraid. See, it's fear that will work on your faith, isn't it? And make it of none effect. Do not be afraid. Only believe and she will be made well. And don't you know, he's hearing, he's here. He's finally, he's got Jesus' attention. Jesus said he'll come. And they're telling him she's dead. His faith, couldn't you just, can't you just, I mean, you hear of a death like that and you just feel all the life drain out of you clear to your feet, right? <clears throat> Do not fear, only believe, and she will be made well. When he came into the house, so he went on with him. He went on with him. When he came into the house, he permitted no one to go in except Peter, James, and John, and the father and the mother of that girl. Now all were weeping. They wept, and they mourned for her. But he said, do not weep. She is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. They wanted to say, well, you just got here. We've been here. The girl is dead. How dare you upset her mother? And Can't you just hear it? They ridiculed him, knowing that she was dead. But he put them all outside. I mean, can you see this scene? Oh, this is quite a scene. All of you, all of you get out. Go on. I mean, quit talking to me. Go on out. Close the door, please. I said, who only could be here with me? And I bet they had a fit, don't you think? 
I mean, they're there to express their grief. And he's throwing them out of the house? Yes. Because we must preserve faith, right? Faith. Faith. To raise this girl up. He put them all outside. Took her by the hand and called, saying, Little girl, arise. And then her spirit returned. They're watching this. Isn't that beautiful? They were watching that death spirit left. Her flesh is starting to get uh, pink again, you know, with life. Her spirit returned and she arose immediately. Sat up, got up, and he commanded that she be given something to eat. <laughs> Jesus says, listen, will somebody go get this little girl something to eat? Let's get her strong. And her parents were astonished. Can you imagine Jarius now? But he charged them to tell no one what had happened. Just let them see her, right? <clears throat> don't don't try to keep hassling. Just just let her see him. We move right along to the ninth chapter of Luke. And then he called his twelve disciples together and he gave them power. I mean, this one miracle here. He gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And you and me too. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He said to them, take nothing for the journey. Don't get bogged down. Don't carry a suitcase. Take nothing for the journey. Neither staffs, nor bag, nor bread, nor money. And do not have two tunics apiece. In other words, he's sending them out by faith. Just go on out. Whatever house you enter, stay there and from there depart. And whoever will not receive you, when you go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet as a testimony against them. I mean, even clear to when you get up and leave, when you're finished in that city. Whoever will not receive you, just shake off dust against them. So they departed and they went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Now let's hurry along here. I've, I've made too many comments. Psalm 71, 71. In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness and cause me to escape, David says. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong refuge to which I may resort continually. You have given the commandment to save me for you are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, O oh my God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. Oh, we can pray these words today, can't we? For you are my hope, O oh my God. You are my trust from my youth. By you I have been upheld from birth. You are he who took me out of my mother's womb. My praise shall be continually of you. I have become a wonder to many, but you are my strong refuge. Let my mouth be filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. Do not cast me off in the time of old age. Do not forsake me when my strength fails. Oh, this is so beautiful. For my enemies speak against me, 
And those who lie and wait for my life take counsel together, saying, God has forsaken him. Pursue and take him, for there is none to deliver him. Oh God, do not be far from me. Oh my God, make haste to help me. Let them be confounded and consumed who are adversaries of my life. Let them be covered with reproach and dishonor who seek my hurt. But I will hope continually and will praise you yet more and more. My mouth shall tell of your righteousness and your salvation all the day. For I do not know their limits. He's saying it could get much worse. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will make mention of your righteousness, of yours only. O oh God, you have taught me from my youth. And to this day, I declare your wondrous works. Now also, when I am old and gray-haired, gray-headed, O oh God, do not forsake me until I declare your strength to this generation, your power to everyone who is to come. Also, your righteousness, O oh God, is very high. You who have done great things, O oh God, who is like you? You who have shown me great and severe troubles shall revive me again and bring me up again from the depths of the earth. You shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. <clears throat> also, with the lute instruments, I will praise you and your faithfulness. Oh, my God, to you I will sing with the harp. Oh, Holy One of Israel, my lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing to you, and my soul, which you have redeemed, my tongue also shall talk of your righteousness all the day long. For they are confounded, for they are brought to shame who seek my hurt. Woo, hallelujah. We wrap up this morning, y'all, with Proverbs chapter 12, verses 5 through 7. Proverbs 12, 5 through 7. The thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceitful. Oh my goodness, do we know that today? The words of the wicked are lie and wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright will deliver them. The wicked are overthrown and are no more, but the house of the righteous will stand. Oh, glory. Father God, we thank you so much, Lord, for this beautiful brand new day. <clears throat> I'd ask, Lord, you'd go with everyone who hears the words of your word and let your word ring in their ears, Lord. Let it Lift them, encourage them, bring healing, bring deliverance. Let them see great impact of this word today on their lives. Changes, righteousness increasing, wickedness leaving. Father God, we pray for peace, peace for Jerusalem, for Israel. We obey you and we pray earnestly for their peace for them to be encouraged and built up. Father God, we're asking that you continue with your right hand of judgment and your right hand of blessing on America, on Israel, on all the nations of the world, Lord. You have people crying out to you in every nation and language. Oh, Father God, we'd ask you to send Holy Ghost to them Holy Spirit to them, to bring answers, to bring deliverance and redemption. Lord, we thank you for being our Lord and our Savior, and 
Bring many who don't know you today, Lord. Bring many to you. Accept the Lord Jesus today, just by faith. You can't get ready. You can't clean up. Forget all that. Just bow your head and ask him to forgive you of your sins and ask him to come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior. He will. You'll feel it. You'll know it. Things will change. Things will change. Answers will come. Amen and amen. Love you all. Have a great day in the Lord. Bye-bye.